they will come from every mountain highway well since the time of prophet ibrahim people answered to the call of allah by performing the hajj but again with the call from prophet muhammad peace and blessings of allah be upon him people are still and will still continue to perform the hajj because the performance of hajj is an, uh, an, a very important pillar of Islam. The Prophet of Islam himself said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah wa ikam is salati wa ita is zakat wa sami ramadan wal hajj, saying that the religion of Islam is built upon five pillars that one must be a witness that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God and to observe the five daily prayers and to give zakat and to fast during the month of Ramadan and to perform the Hajj. People are still performing the Hajj in response to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's call in verse 97 of chapter 3 in which he says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ هِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَتَعَ عَلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيُّ نَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَزِيمُ Meaning, and pilgrimage to the house of Allah is a duty for mankind, for those who can afford the journey, those who are physically and mentally fit and are financially prepared for the journey, they should perform the Hajj. It has also been declared in another statement by the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, when it is said, وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ وَعَنْهُ قَالْ حَتَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ كَدْ فَرَدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْحَجْ Jafahujju, meaning prophets of Islam, according to Abu Huraira, once delivered a sermon addressing his people, he said, O oh my people, Allah has made the Hajj compulsory upon you, and as such, you should perform the Hajj. But, as I said, it is only those who are medically physically and financially prepared who should perform the Hajj. It is a very strong pillar of Islam for those who can afford the journey. It is not a journey that anyone you know, can just go and borrow money or steal some money somewhere or illegal money to perform the Hajj. The money that one should perform the Hajj with must come from a legitimate source. So Aja Aisha, can you continue this? ليشهدوا منافع لهم ويذكروا اسم الله في أيام معلومات في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام فكلوا منها وأطعموا البائس الفقير that they may witness things that are of benefit to them and mention the name of Allah on appointed days over the beast of cattle that he had bestowed upon them. Then eat thereof and feed therewith the poor unfortunate. Definitely there are some benefits in Hajj. People can trade in Hajj if it is a legitimate trade. He also said that they should mention the name of Allah on appointed days over the beast of cattle. That is the ram that we sacrifice during the period of Hajj, on the day of Eid, for example. And one is ordered to eat of it and also to feed those who are in need of it. The appointed days are the days of Hajj. Alhamdulillah, as we are okay as pilgrims are preparing for the journey they will surely be um, informed by their guides about what the appointed days are 
the appointed days are the days of Hajj, which starts on the eighth day of Zul Hijjah. But can, Aisha, can you continue with the verse? <laughs> Then let them complete their prescribed duties and pay their vows and go around the ancient house that is the Kaaba. <coughs> let them complete their prescribed duties. This is something that one must know as people prepare for the Hajj. It is good for every pilgrim, male and female, to know what the prescribed duties are, especially during the days of Hajj that one must prepare to complete the duties. That means to depart from Mina to Arafat. Stand, the standing of Arafat, the Arafat prayer on that day when the sun sets at Arafat, every pilgrim would move in a dignified manner without hurting each other. Every pilgrim must help one another because that is the day of Hajj after sunset to move from Arafat to Musdalifa, to spend the night in Musdalifa, to observe the Maghrib prayers combined with the Isha prayers in Musdalifa and pick up the stones in Musdalifa, spend the night in Musdalifa and proceed from Musdalifa at the early hours of the following day towards the Jamarat in which every pilgrim is expected to throw seven stones at the, the Jamarat which is closest to Mecca. Seven stones must be thrown on that early hours of the morning and then the pilgrim can proceed to Mecca to Tawaf the Kaaba and also to do the Safa and Marwa and if of course there is time and there must be time one can drink some of the water of Zamzam and also pray two rakats behind the station of uh, Makama Ibrahim. If there is no place there, you can pray anywhere in the Kaaba. So these are the prescribed duties, which is very, very important for every pilgrim to note. It is something that must be done. None of these must be left out, however busy we may be, all Muslims will be proceeding, all Muslims or all pilgrims will be proceeding towards the same destination, uttering the same words in the same way at the same time for the same purpose. And then at the end of it, alhamdulillah, they can come back to Mina. This is the day of Eid and wait until the following day before they throw 21 stones, seven each in each of the three jamarats and the following day too, 21 stones again, seven each on each of the three Jamarats before departing for Mecca to prepare for the journey back home. Alhamdulillah, Aisha, can we continue? <laughs> That is the command. And whoso magnifieth the sacred things of Allah, it will be well for him in the sight of his Lord. The cattle are lawful unto you, save that which has been told you. So shun filth of idols and shun lying speech. The command from Allah must be observed as soon as a pilgrim gets to Mecca. Allah says, and whoso magnifieth the sacred things of Allah, it will be well for him in the sight of Allah in the sight of his Lord. All these are commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In verse 197 of chapter 2, Allah emphasizes the need for us to obey his commands with fear of Allah 
when he said al-hajju ashhurum ma 